And CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Laura Coates and constitutional attorney Paige Pate. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. So Paige, let me start with you. And this is not just limited to the district in which that judge uh, presides. This is nationwide. And uh, essentially, this is something that I guess on paper allows everyone to come back in. Is this as simple as the Customs and Border Protection officials say that business is back to usual? This is not simple at all, Victor. First of all, I am a little bit concerned about this particular judge in Washington deciding that this order can take effect across the country. The judge was relying on the decision from the Texas case where a federal judge basically stayed President Obama's immigration executive order. But the law on that issue is not clear, and I totally expect the Trump White House and the Justice Department to challenge that part of the order and say, look, you're a federal judge in Washington, that's great, you control your district, but you cannot decide this particular issue for districts across the country because as we know there's at least one federal district judge in another part of the country who sees the case very differently so all it does is create a bunch of confusion for the customs and border patrol agents who are there at the airport at the border trying to make real-time decisions about who can and cannot come into the country Laura let's talk about that because if we look back to the Eastern District of New York a week ago that filing was a class action filing so then that applied nationwide but but uh, the, the respective or the successive um, uh, filings were limited to specific districts, to specific airports. This now nationwide. Any concerns from your perspective? Well, Victor, well, I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead, yeah, go ahead it's Laura. Okay. It's okay. There are concerns, of course. And really the key issue here is that you've got the Massachusetts court in the First Circuit, uh, Court of Appeals, and you also have Washington State in the Ninth Circuit. So you have, you're going to have potentially two battling circuits trying to figure out whether or not this executive order is unconstitutional or unlawful. And remember, the distinction between the judge's rulings are very, very, very different. In Washington State, the judge is saying, listen, this is probably an establishment clause violation, just taking from what he has highlighted as part of the order that he'd like to have banned at this point. And then in Massachusetts, the court is saying not only is this ban not necessarily a Muslim ban, there's not even a right for people with a visa to be able to come to court and try to fight for it, meaning there's no due process issue here. So you've got two very different courts with different conclusions, which means this is ripe for a Supreme Court battle. And unfortunately, right now, we've only got eight justices. This is going to probably take nine. Hmm. What's the argument uh, if you were making the case for uh, the, the federal government as we await that appeal uh, from the Department of Justice page? Well, I, I would take uh, two arguments. Number one, I would say, look, the federal district judge in Washington based this order on not just the reading of the words in the executive order, but what the president has also said. That concerned the judge in Massachusetts. That judge said, look, I'm not concerned what the president said during the campaign. I'm concerned about what this order actually does. So my first argument would be the order itself does not ban Muslims. And then secondly, what I would do is challenge the scope, the jurisdiction of the judge who said, I'm going to have this order in place across the country. But I don't know that those arguments will ultimately be successful. But what we have to remember at this point is not one single judge has actually determined that the order is unconstitutional. There's a good chance that's going to happen, but at this point, still uncertainty. And remember, Vic the real issue here is the timing of how it's brought into court. We're not talking about either judge having cited the merits or the constitutionality. We're talking about two judges who said whether or not we can stop take a pause and figure out what arguments should be made. But again, the big elephant in the room here is there is a lot of deference that's given to the President of the United States in terms of national security and deciding who can come into the country. And so you will have this kind of weighing of factors. On the one hand, national security that I think the White House is espousing. And on the other hand, whether that interest tramples on our establishment clause. Let's talk about that deference, uh, Laura, a bit, because the, the judge here, Judge Robards, was careful uh, to highlight uh, the the judicial branch as a tri uh, an equal member of this tripart yeah. government to to establish his authority to make uh, this ruling while we're hearing from some of the supporters of the executive order that this judge at least from their characterization uh, tried to override the president. Now you know it's so interesting because 
in a week where we've already had um, an, a nomination of a Supreme Court Justice um, Gorsuch, who is very, very much a staunch believer in the three-party system and the separation of power and trying to ensure that each branch has different powers and can't be trampled on, we have a judge who's being questioned for that very reason. And so it's very important to think contextually of how this will actually turn out. But at its core, this is only a pause. Mm. This is the courts saying, listen, I'd like to hear both arguments. And of course, one of the fallouts from last week's Sally Yates firing is that the Department of Justice is probably scrambling to figure out why the same argument they made in Massachusetts gave them a victory yeah. and the same one in Washington State gave them a, a loss. So it's going to be a balance. Within hours of one another. Paige, quickly, uh, we know that our viewers are joining us from around the world right now. And our Ben Wiedemann is in Baghdad. He heard from a man, and I wrote it down here because it was uh, pretty startling. He said, if I were to go to the U.S., they would just throw me in jail or put me on a flight back to Iraq. Why go? Is there anything that you can say to people who watched what happened last week, people who left the U.S., left their home country, were okay to enter, and then mid-flight they were banned by the time they got on the ground, they were detained or sent back, that you can assuage those concerns or fears? Well, Victor, I'd hate to put myself in that position because the president seems to be making this up as we go along, and, and the advice that's given to the agents at the airport seems to be changing. But the one thing I think is clear from this order, and it's been consistent from all of the judges who have reviewed the case, is that if you have legal status, if you've already been approved for a visa, you're a legal permanent resident, whatever, and you have a right to travel into the United States, this executive order is not going to prevent that. This executive order is not going to result in your removal. I cannot give that type of advice to people who have not already applied for visas, no. who don't have the legal status that these other folks have. But it's touch and go right now. All right, Paige Pate, Laura Coates, thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. All right.